Good morning. And only three minutes late. <laughs> uh, still figuring out uh, the timing around. I mean, honestly, just getting down and getting the coffee in uh, early enough that I can uh, do all the Invisalign stuff. Or I'm supposed to go live. And, uh, you know, so so hard sometimes just to roll out of bed, get the day going. But here I am. Uh, and we have um, my work flowy <laughs> with various notes and things. Um, because we're not starting the day looking at glowing telegram. Uh, although, what I want to do today is adjacent to uh to glowing telegram uh which is our stream management application thingy um this thing a tool for managing stream recordings um so i think on the minecraft stream last week uh brainless and i were ch uh, chatting uh, and talking about some some AWS stuff, and it has been something that's on my mind. There are a lot of things that I'm doing in Glowing Telegram that there are some very nice services that I'm familiar with in AWS that I could be using. Um, and uh, you know, I I would have to build less. <laughs> and for the scale that I you know for this tool when I'm just using it. Um, it would be very inexpensive. Like the, the biggest expense is probably going to be the storage cost, which I'm paying anyway, since I am archiving all of my VODs, the raw footage to S3. Oh, speaking of which, I should, um, let me get my AWS session going here off, off screen. glad I use a password manager because having the keyboard uh, in view means that if I were to try to type a password, you'd see what I was typing, but that's fine because I won't be typing it. Just the MFA code. We have an AWS. So I don't think there's anything sensitive in this. This is basically, I mostly use this for uh, S3 uh, storage for various things, uh, but I'm gonna use this account to do some uh, testing of things and kind of playing around. Um, so I have a bunch of different websites that I host through <laughs> uh, S3 and, uh, and CloudFront in here. And uh, this is where I'm putting all of the videos from all of my streams um, ever since I started recording locally. So a year ago, <laughs> I have a year's worth of stream VODs uh, in here. And uh, you can see that the oldest ones are now in Glacier because they have, they have been untouched for so long. I have a, uh, a life cycle here lifecycle rule after 30 days move to standard and frequent access and after 60 days move to glacier instant retrieval and after 150 days move to uh, uh apparently it's called glacier flexible retrieval now formerly glacier so anyway uh so that's a thing so I'm, I'm paying like 50 bucks a month for storage uh is kind of what it's averaged out to right now for storing all of this stuff and I don't know if I'll keep this really literally forever or if at some point I will get rid of um, really old videos. Uh, but it's, it's nice just to have the, the archive or if I ever want it, I can go back and, and use it. Uh, so today, what I want to do is I want to check out a couple things that I've never used before. Um, so I, in my professional life, have used a lot of AWS things. Um, so talking like uh, 
a bunch of AWS services that, that it's too long of a list to go through. Um, but starting back in the day, like 10 years ago with S3 and EC2 and simple workflow service, um, and, you know, going from there. Um, but, you know, in terms of adjacent technologies like uh, the Cloud Development Kit from AWS, uh, Terraform, um, and then, you know, other things in the past like Puppet and um, Ansible and uh, other uh, fabric, <laughs> which is, uh, uh, yeah, anyway. So lots of different like infrastructure tooling for, for managing that. And then um, back when I actually tried to run software locally, which, um, yeah, anyway, um, I, I did do things where I like, I basically built my, my own equivalent thing to local stack with Docker. This is many years ago. Um, but uh, things I, I've come across recently thinking about, oh, if I want to play around with some AWS stuff, maybe look at migrating uh, Glowing Telegram, this application to be hosted in AWS, um, at least part of it, and start to like leverage all the different services um, besides just S3. So thinking Lambda functions, AWS batch, um, step functions um, are, are kind of the, the first like immediate candidates. Um, I, I'm gonna need some tooling to help me manage that. I could just, you know, throw things together and uh, whatnot. But local stack looks interesting. I've never used it before. And I could go with the AWS Cloud Development Kit. I think there's a lot of, um, I'm really familiar with it, but um, it is something that has some cons. It's very locked into um, AWS and Specifically, it uses CloudFormation, which is a really great tool, and I really like CloudFormation, but there are reasons why you wouldn't want that um, in terms of being able to, it has some warts, and there are some times where CloudFormation is just like, it gets stuck and it can be frustrating to deal with. Uh, I felt those frustrations. And then, so something like Terraform or maybe Pulumi could be good options there. The Cloud Development Kit is really nice, um, that's kind of why I wouldn't want to go with Terraform. I, I feel a lot of frustration with Terraform, uh, but Pulumi seems kind of like maybe a compromise that could be good. So I'm going to try that out. And then what we're going to do to motivate, it sounds like a lecture, um, to motive like the, the things that I want to try to do, um, take a stab at today, are I want to make a couple Lambda functions. I would like to, so, I would like to do the Lambda functions in Rust, um, but the issue is going to be using local stack that I don't think I can. Um, specifically, without paying for local stack pro, it doesn't support using a Docker image as the, the runtime for the Lambda. So I'm going to, I'm gonna at least set up local stack and get it run, set up and see what it's like. And then we may um, put that aside. I just wanna kinda of try it out and see what it's like before I spend like $500 to buy local stack pro. Um, and then we'll check out Pulumi. And um, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna do some stuff with AWS Batch and AWS Batch is essentially like a, um, you give it a container image and it runs it. You can, you know, queue up jobs. And so unlike lambdas, which are things that take, uh, can only run for up to, up to 15 minutes. And there are other limitations in terms of available RAM and CPU and disk space. AWS batch has uh, far fewer limitations um, because you can have it run as a container on, you know, instances with like GPUs or lots of disk, disk space and all that stuff. So, and no limit on how long it takes to run the, the batch job. Um, but that's also something where local stack, you have to have the pro version in order to really be able to, uh, to use locally. So uh, some limitations there that unless I want to shell out, you have to pay for a year of it. 
uh, like 500 bucks, 420, whatever it is, um, that um, would be limitations that would keep me from, from making progress. So let's start by setting up local stack though. Um, and this is this is legitimately, I think I've looked at the docs a couple of times, but I, I have not done this before. So, um, we can pip install local stack, I guess. So I, I made a separate folder for our glowing telegram AWS tests, but I'll just pip install local stack. Uh, I guess it's, I don't have pip installed in this environment. Interesting. How did that happen? <laughs> um, Hmm, I'm sorry. I don't use a super important password for my uh, WSL, but I still don't want you to see it. So let me find the video source. Where is it? Oh, it's near the top, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Faulting Caesar installation, good. All right, so let's go back to the docs while that's going. Uh, and so this is installing the CLI. Enables you to run the Docker image containing global stack in runtime. Okay. This, this feels very familiar. Uh, when I did my little CLI tool back for um, uh, the startup I was working at, Saltbox, uh, we had a, a product called uh, Wax LRS, so uh, Learning Record Store. And uh, so, so I made a little Python command line that managed our Docker containers running locally through, well, ultimately Docker Compose uh, to um, you need AWS local too, huh? Uh, to, to do something similar to this, so that's familiar. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what it tells me. Okay, so that installed, let's install this. And ignore all the warnings, and let's keep going. Quick start. Okay. Start local stack inside a Docker container by running local stack start dash D. I'll do things. Do I have access? I'm, I'm sure I do, right? Docker. There we go. There's all the the existing containers for glowing telegram. I'm uh, my intention today is not to try to start bringing anything from glowing telegram really over. It's more about figuring out infrastructure for uh, that network. I'm surprised. Um. local stack okay so um export path equals dollar path colon um let's see user slash dot local then okay so now um then dot dollar user thing? Yeah. Oh yeah, but okay. 
No. <laughs> there we go. There's probably another environment variable for that path, but hey, there we go. All right. Local stack, CLI, profile default, starting, starting local stack in Docker mode, preparing environment, pulling things. All right. That's doing its thing. Let's go back to the docs. Keep reading. Hey, Brainless. Good morning. I decided I was going to uh, check out local stack and do some AWS stuff after all. Mm -hmm. All right, so that um, seems to have worked. So we have local stack running. You decided to wake up, fair. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have local stack status services. Actually, let me um, uh, dot profile. Uh, set pass so it includes users private bin if it exists. So that should have worked. Well, anyway, I fixed the path for now. Um, local stack status services. Look at all the services. Is this alphabetical? It looks like it is. So we don't get batch, which is one of the things I will need, but that's part of uh, local stack pro. So if I decide to shell out $420, <laughs> we can do that. But step functions will be nice. We can try that. Uh, Lambda S3. Uh, SES, SNS, SQS, SSM, uh, transcribe. Uh, so they have a whole page. Let's see, do we have the uh, local stack docs? There we go. Okay, so there's get started. Um, user guides reference. Where is there's a page that has like what services I'm like how uh, like how much it's implemented for the services. There we go. Feature coverage. That's what I'm looking for. So it's interesting the transcript is in there. Something we could experiment with is um, I'm, I'm assuming it, it, it's just like a stub. is listed here. Getting started with Amazon Generator Transcribe on local stack. Service, speech recognition capabilities. Uh, anyway, so, you know, something I can consider is trying this, uh, the, the real service, um, instead of my thing I put together using OpenAI Whisper. Um, so it looks like the local stack implementation uses Vosk uh, to download and cache them all. Okay, that makes sense. That's that's kind of similar to what's going on with uh, Whisper. Um, so we could try, you know, uh, using uh, AWS for that and paying <laughs> paying for it. Um, ultimately, if I do decide. And I, I think I'm, I'm I'm pretty confident confident that eventually I do want to move everything to running on AWS just so that I don't have to worry about stuff being interrupted if this Windows PC that I'm operating on randomly did, decides to reboot. Um, and it just you know, so I I I have this PC for for my use, and then this all this this processing stuff can happen on another computer. Um, but whether I'm using OpenAI Whisper or using a service for it, I'm still going to be paying for a compute, right? So it's just a question of how much this is going to cost, uh, which I have not looked into yet. But it's interesting that that is something that's baked into the the community version of local stack. 
Okay, so where do we go from here? Um, let's go back to getting started. We got installation. Uh, to use all of local stacks features, we recommend to get a local stack account and set up your auth token. Why? Or cloud emulator. It's a primary function to retrieve the user's license. Well, we don't have a license yet. Um, okay. So in other words, Windows rebooting no. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Uh, so I don't think I need to do this until I want to pay them. And I don't want to pay them right now. So uh, let's see. I've never done auth token. Yeah, I think that's for if you, you pay them for the pro version. And if I were to really use this, like for how I intend to use AWS, like to have that run locally, um, I would need to pay them for the pro version. Because there's a bunch of things that are only supported, like uh, AWS Bash, which I will definitely use because there's lots of things I want to do that will take longer than 15 minutes or would be otherwise awkward to do inside of a Lambda. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so let's try this out. Test bucket. All right. Nothing in there, right? Cool. But we can make a bucket. Hey, uh, native hunter. You gonna be lurking? Until the cell dies? All right. Well, thanks for the lurk. Hope you get some uh, some some rest of sleep. All right. So we can essentially use this AWS local, which appears to be like the AWS command line interface, um, but against our local uh, stack to do all the things you might do from the command line, like creating a Lambda function. Um, and master API put bucket notification configuration. Uh, Battlefield wasn't good. stop it doesn't persist any data across restarts okay so if I were to in other words do this oh it's pro <laughs> honestly that can be a good thing from a perspective of having a clean testing environment for things, uh, especially if you have like everything that for standing up your infrastructure is automated in some way. Uh, so like if we'll try to list this bucket, yeah, no such bucket. There we go. Great. No such bucket. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, so let's check out Pulumi. Because I think what I would like to do is I would like to, um, there's a, hey, Sahel, what are we making? Uh, today, I'm mostly just trying out some tooling to figure out what's going to work for me. Um, the the background here is, and I think I have a YouTube video for this, uh, with the, uh, okay, command's not running. <laughs> Second, I'll come back to that. Um, but Glowing Telegram is the, the thing that I've been working on this year on stream. And it's a tool for managing stream recordings, uh, doing like speech to text and doing um, summarization and helping me identify interesting parts of videos for edits. And thank you for the follow. Sahil291998 just followed. Um, and so that that's kind of 
the idea I'm also trying to keep running again. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I've been working on this since December. Um, and so this is this is a mostly working application that um, is just running locally on my computer. But what I want to do is I want to start migrating some of the functionality into AWS, specifically around um, I want to start with ingesting the raw video files and doing that speech to text, so the transcription and the um, silence detection and the, uh, I want to also generate uh, like keyframe thumbnails for the video and that sort of stuff. Um, so basically that just that initial processing uh, because I'm already manually archiving the videos to S3. So I could trigger uh, some Lambda functions or some batch jobs to do that processing work there. Um, and I figured that would be kind of a good place to start. Um, it's the bot running now? It's exclamation YT. Isn't that the command? Commands? Uh, oh, GT. GT. I'm not aware of the many things with respect to ABS. I will also learn from this. Yes, there, there is so much uh, in terms of AWS services. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to go about setting that up. Um, from, you know, just going into the AWS, AWS console uh, and just manually creating uh, the resources for what you want to do, creating uh, servers in EC2 or creating step functions and Lambda functions on all of these sorts of things to uh, what I'm going to be looking at more today, which is more around automating the creation of those resources and having um, infrastructure as code so that I can run something locally that will automatically provision those resources in AWS to do that work. Right. So um, the, the things that I want to do here, I want to create some Lambda functions. So these are just some small functions that can be run inside of AWS. Um, one is just a thing that can be triggered that will start this other thing called a step function, uh, which let's, let's let me talk about that for a second. It's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting feature in AWS that allows you, uh, let's, let's look at the template because these are interesting. Um, so let's say you wanted to process a CSV file from S3. Uh, let's, let's use this template. So you can have, you don't have to go about creating it through their GUI builder, but the idea is you can define a workflow um, that will like run a Lambda function. So run some code, right? To um, generate a CSV file, however it does that. And then you can process, uh, you can get a set of items like rows and process over it. And the, the neat thing about, you, you could just write this as code, right? You could just write some code running on a server and a Lambda function um, to do this work. But in a step function, you have visibility into what actually happens as this executes. You can see, oh, uh, it gets the CSV and then it starts processing and, oh, this throws an error or this successfully uh, sent a message to SQS. And you have that kind of that visibility into the process. And the state machines can run for a very long time. Like you can have a process that could take not just minutes or hours or days, but actually like I think the maximum runtime on a step function is a year. So you can have things where it's like send a uh, send an API call to um, make a phone call, wait for a text message to come back, you know those sorts of things <laughs> to avoid proper logging. Well, much more than that, it um, I don't have good examples here because this is something I use for work, so I can't show you that, but. Um, Think like this is more about orchestration, right? So if you have a bunch of different API endpoints or services or Lambda functions or anything 
really anything. Look at all the different integrations there are here. Uh, so like I'm thinking about integrating to AWS Batch, but you can also just uh, make an API call. You can run a Lambda function. You can interact with the database, say DynamoDB. Um, you can, you know, all of these things. And uh, like, I think SageMaker is in here somewhere too. All, all sorts of things, right? Um, so it's really more of an integration and orchestration tool. Your like lower level things where you're thinking about, you know, um, you write the code for things that are that are custom built and you put it in a Lambda or in a batch job or whatever. And then you orchestrate like the workflow of those things uh, here. Um, yeah, so anyway, that that's 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 an abbreviated version. Uh, but yeah, so so many services now. Uh, I remember when they first rolled this out, you know, this is fairly limited, right? Um, just to like SQS, SNS, Lambda, and then I think they didn't, I think they had map, but there's a bunch of other um, flow elements here, choice and parallel and map, uh, wait. Oh, they have some built-in patterns. That's nice. What does that look like? So I can put that in here. Yeah, that, that looks about right. And it has placeholders where you would put in the actual task to do the thing. Process S3 objects. Just some nice like patterns here. Well, anyway, we're not we're not actually doing this now. I just wanted to uh, show this a little bit. So there's some some powerful stuff in AWS that you can leverage. And of course you could create all this manually, but um, I, I would never. <laughs> um, and so the thing I want to look at for automating the creation of all the stuff we're going to need in AWS is Pulumi. Um, there's some other options. I'm really, uh, used to using the AWS cloud development kit. Um, but I figured I want to try something different for this. So we're going to try Pulumi. Uh, and for this it has, you can just do YAML. Um, Python, .NET, Go, Java, and Node. So I'm thinking TypeScript for this. That That is kind of what I want to do. And there's also um, a user guide here for using Pulumi for local stack. <laughs> Python. Uh, let's see. So what is, uh, how do we use Pulumi with local stack? So there's a Pulumi local wrapper script that makes it work with local stack. And we provide some environment variables optionally. Pip install Pulumi local. Um, oh, and you can do Pulumi local and new type, uh, AWS type script. Uh, interesting. Don't know what all these options do. Let's go back to uh, get started or download and install one of the two. Lumi, uh, let's see, let's see, Linux. Hey, dang newbie, welcome in. How's it going? dangerous command where we download an arbitrary executable from the internet and run it. All right, and we'll add that path to our path. Uh, oh, there's uh, Plumy and Docker Hub.
It was a slash helm or a dollar helm. Cool. All right, easier to sink than on Docker Compose. I mean, I could do that. I don't mind just installing it locally though, which I just did. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is also an option and you could um, jelly wrap, you know, an alias around this or something. Okay, well, I already did this, so we'll live with it. Uh, and then let's check version. Three dot one thirty dot zero. So how do we use it? Getting started. Say that I, I mean to be fair, I am on Windows, but I'm I'm running inside a uh, WSL, so it's li Linux, effectively. Uh, what version? Of, I have a current version of node, right? 21? Okay. Uh, at what point are we... Yeah, let's install Pulumi local. So this is, this is kind of... This, this would be nice to be able to just be able to set up a project locally, like local source files. Have it run against uh, local stack, see that it works, and then deploy it into actual AWS. CDWS op option is unnecessary if you're already in the project directory. That, oh, oh that's it. Um, what is dash S? Uh, let's do this and do dash dash help and see what it tells us. Excellent. There are 227 locally installed templates. Interesting. Uh, so what is, I, I'm assuming dash Y is just like, accept all the, the, the prompts for confirmation, but what does dash S do? Stack, stack name. Why is it LS dev? Oh, local stack dev. Right, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, so I might just run this command. Can we can we list templates? We can dash L. Shell. Wow. There are many. Probably, probably want to look at the ones that are AWS. Uh, C sharp, F sharp, Go, Java, JavaScript. Um, native versus not native. What does it mean? Scala? Visual Basic. <laughs> uh, uh, what is the case for doing Python? 
besides brainless asking for it. There is a there is a, a template for Python. Might be a little bit more concise. I don't think for this, from what I've seen in Pulumi code, I don't think it's gonna matter. It's not gonna be a lot of like promise chain stuff, callback things that we're going to need to do. Um, I, I think it's gonna be pretty equivalent and I would prefer TypeScript. Rather than it, because we're gonna have like if if this ends up being the route I go for real, then we're already gonna have TypeScript at the front end. We're gonna have at least some Rust on the back end, maybe some more TypeScript and, and Node in the back end at some point uh, scattered in there. Um, there's nothing wrong with having more languages, um, but I don't know that just to do it <laughs> is a good reason. Uh, what were the rest of the arguments? Let's just let's just follow what is here. All right, Pulumi local new AWS uh, TypeScript dash y dash s local stack dev. Um, manage your Pulumi stacks by logging in. We need a access token. None of this talks about logging in to Pulumi. Talks about AWS access. Maybe here. Okay. And if it's your if it's your first time running it, you may be prompted to log into Pulumi Cloud. It's free for individual use. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. I guess so. Uh, yeah, you couldn't launch the, the browser? Okay. All right. What login shall I use? I guess I'll use my GitHub login. Uh, I don't I don't recall exactly what that looks like when I uh, <laughs> click that button. So I'm gonna move that over there. Yeah, you don't need to see my, my organizations. Um, authorize Bloomy. All right, and then after I click through, I end up here. You're logged in to the Pulumi CLI. And then we can go into the Pulumi, Pulumi Cloud. Yeah. GitHub. Oh, that works. All right. Uh, is there anything I don't want to show on stream in this? Uh, looks fine. There you go. I'll just add that to my set of tabs here. All right. So we have a web UI to see what's going on. Uh, and if we go back here, um, looks like it succeeded. It created, let's, let's scroll back. Create a project GT AWS tests, which is the name of the folder here. Um, for my testing, create a stack LS, so local stack dev, save config, installing dependencies. So it's a TypeScript project, it has node dependencies. And a package JSON, what are our dependencies? Dev dependencies, TypeScript 5, uh, types node, Pulumi, AWS, AWS X, and Pulumi are our dependencies for our infrastructure. And then we ended up with a gettingnore file that index.ts. So here's uh, how we define what we're going to uh, deploy into AWS, right? So we're making a bucket called my bucket. Uh, I don't think. There's, there's probably a bucket that exists in the global namespace called my bucket, but we're running locally, so it doesn't matter. That'll work anyway. And then what's this file? Okay, so we have a config for our local stack dev uh, uh, stack, I guess. Region is US East 1. And 
then Plumy YAML, uh, which defines, I guess, over overall project, runtime Node.js, package manager npm. Uh, this is from the template, the description. And oh yeah, where the we, we use the template. Okay, good stuff. And then we get a TS config file. Um, it's just index.ts. Okay. will be interesting to think about is like, I, we'll see. Um, I I am inclined to go to continue with like a mono repo setup. So if I were to do that, where does all this stuff live in relationship to all the other project files of the the things that need to be built and deployed? Um, will be interesting to figure out. Um, yeah. Like the stuff that we're, so ultimately what I want to do for like uh, AWS batch and for lambdas is build Docker images that have the, the run times of the things I want to do uh, code wise. And those need to be an elastic um, container registry to be used by those services. I don't necessarily want to move my build infrastructure into AWS though. I probably want to keep it in GitHub. So there'll need to be some kind of syncing. Once we get there, we're, we're a ways away from that. Uh, so can we, can we make our bucket, my bucket? Let's go back to here. Okay. So we were following these instructions, right? To create a new Pulumi project with Pulumi local. Uh, and we can do Pulumi local stack select dash c ls dev if you've just run the the this command here then it's already selected there's a question how do we see that information back to the terminal so if i just run this what does it say current stack is ls dev owner is me no resources, more information here. And it brings us back to this. Here we go, stacks, GT AWS test. Um, that's findable from there, right? Okay, cool. So we can have multiple stacks inside of this project. Is that how this works? New project has us come to here. Interesting. Pulumi AI. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, uh, so if I click this, this is a stack. Interesting. Like this is the stack. So what is this? Stack project maybe? Anyway, continuing on with this tutorial, um, since it's already selected, we can do Lumi local up. And it should make our bucket because that was what was in the template to just make a bucket, right? It's interesting. Um, so the, the the closest thing that I have experience with to this is uh, cloud development kit from AWS. But with that, generally what you do is you define a, a class that represents the stack that you want to deploy. And then you have to do stuff inside of the, the constructor of the class to define things you want to export from that stack. So having this kind of flasher, okay, make a bucket and then you can export from the file, it's kind of different. Uh, so what happens? So we are, we downloaded the provider AWS. We're previewing the update. So if I, uh, I bet if I go back to this UI, refresh, go into the stack. Is there a 
deployment, update, overview. If I go to deployments, uh, dashboard. I was thinking maybe I could find it in the UI, but I don't know where to find that. Let me click this. Okay, it is a preview. How would I get to this view from here? Maybe I can't. Oh, there it is. Uh, preview of update one succeeded. Okay. So you go to updates and recent previews. All right. So uh, this is going to create the Plumi stack and then an S3 bucket. And the output will be the bucket name, which is what it says right here. <laughs> it's the same thing. Do I want to perform this update? Yes. All right. And then if I go back to updates, I can see the details here and it's happening. It's pretty slick. You can imagine if maybe you have some automation to do your deploys for you, then you know, you wouldn't have a local terminal where it's being run, it's being run on some server somewhere, but you'd be able to see it in this, this UI. Which, um, going back to my experience with the cloud development kit, the kind of equivalent of that would be going and looking at um, uh, cloud formation. All right, so then if I were to scroll back up to where I was running AWS local, can I, can I list buckets like this? There it is. So we can see in the output, this is the the, the bucket name that was created. Oh, interesting. So it doesn't, so the argument here to bucket is not, confused. Oh, it, the, the variable is a lie. So bucket ID is the uniquely I sent uh, assigned ID for the managed resource. So it's like an internal ID to uniquely represent this. It's not the bucket name to get the bucket name. It's probably a, a bucket name. Jake Kardashian, hello. Jake underscore Jardashian just subscribed for seven months. Thank you for the resub. How is it going? Bucket dot. How do, I, how do I get the bucket name? Good morning. What is bucket domain name? Yeah, bucket name to s 3amazoncom Is there not just a name? Well, obviously I know what the name is because I said it here. It's just kind of misleading to say that, oh, we're exporting the bucket name. We're not, <laughs> we're, we're exporting the ID. Uh, just got out of bed, moved into a new apartment yesterday. So tired, how am I? Uh, doing well, doing well. Surprised that an hour has gone by on the stream already. Um, but yeah, just uh, enjoying another Sunday morning. Looking forward to having tomorrow off. I think tomorrow I may start my stream earlier um, and try to see if we can get to the moon in uh, Greg Tech New Horizons, mod in Minecraft. Um, we're, we're, we've been getting pretty close <laughs> and it's gonna open up a lot of possibilities. So I might, I might do a longer stream tomorrow. Um, so we'll see. Take it a day at a time. Um, yeah, going good, going good. Got my, my coffee in this morning and then only was a few minutes late to starting the stream uh, from when it was scheduled. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, uh, the next step is, what's, what's the next step in the docs? Uh, we can create a new stack. Um, yeah, we can create new stacks. I don't, I don't really need 
need more stacks though. Yeah, you need coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we did this. So yeah, so, okay. So tutorial over, we did it. Um, so if I go back to here and I look at resources in the, the web UI for this, I can see here's the bucket that was created. You can see all these different uh, attributes that were populated. That's cool. Uh, so uh, after the break that's coming up, I am going to be looking at making some Lambda functions, right? So we're going to, we're going to try to make a couple, a uh, couple of Lambda functions. Uh, one that interacts with an AWS service and one that interacts with Twitch. Um, I think it's going to be challenging to do this in Rust right now, because I think to do that, I would need to do a Docker image Lambda, and that's not supported in the free version of global set. So we're going to check to see if that is possible or not really quick after the break, and then we'll launch into making some Lambda functions, um, either in Rust, if that's possible, or in uh, TypeScript. Uh, and then see how that goes. All right, so I'm gonna take a break just for a couple minutes and I'll be back um, with some more coding. All right, BRB. Yes, you can get clone this. Uh, it is, in fact, an open source project. It is nothing on.